Welcome to episode 21 of the Necronama.com. I am James Sabata, horror author, screenwriter, co-host of the podcast you're listening to right now. And while I am a fat white male who loves cookies, you probably don't want me in your house. I don't want you in my house, period. But anyway, uh, I am Don Guillory, author, historian, educator, and co-host of the podcast as well. But you guys already know that. Um, And want to wish everyone a happy holiday or happy holidays uh, for those of you who are celebrating or not celebrating. And of course, you want to definitely remember that or at least acknowledge all the folks that make our holidays possible, the Chinese food restaurants. Yes, absolutely. Without those people, I would probably not be a fat white man anymore. That'd be sad. Hey, there's nothing <laughs> like a holiday with Chinese food. You just can't eat it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I've been looking all over for a Chinese restaurant in my local area uh, to make sure that they're going to be open on that day. If not, I'm just going to get a bunch of stuff Christmas Eve and be ready to go. And the reason why we were rambling and not talking about a specific film or anything <laughs> that's going on. I thought that's what we always is, Well, yeah, is uh, we definitely want to thank everybody who's been listening for this year. You've been making, uh, you know. Those of you who've been listening and those of you who've been spreading the word have been making our show uh, what it is and, and have helping it catch on. Uh, but definitely want to end the year by talking about why we are, are doing this show in the first place, uh, what inspired us, and, and basically what we hope to get out of it and what we hope that all of you get out of it. Yeah. When we first started this, it was a panel at... What what were they calling it that year? Was it Phoenix Comic Con, Phoenix Comic Fest, Phoenix Fan Fusion? It was one of those. Phoenix Confusion. Confusion. I'm stealing your thing. We still love you, Phoenix. We're not making fun of you that badly. Trust me. But it was just a panel that we wanted to do that was horror as social commentary. We kept talking about how, you know, horror has a lot to say. And horror has always, as as anybody who's listening to this knows, horror has always been like the little stepchild that's not loved as much in the movie industry. It's the heavily loved. Stepchild. Heavily loved. I'm trying to stay away from such things. Look, no, I used to be a genius. Fine. <laughs> but uh, no, nah, it's it's always the one that's kicked to the side. Is that's what you do if you can't write something real? And to anyone who's ever said that, I just want to really say fuck you horror is amazing and horror has given me a community that truly cares i literally don't think i've met better people than i have in the horror community and i'm not just saying that i legitimately want to thank anyone who's ever done anything for me helped me in any way allowed me to help them or just like been there to tell us how to do stuff whether it was My writing career or with screenplays or even this podcast, people went out of their way to help me. And it's such a cool community and I love it so much. So I wanted to do something good for it. Don, what about you? Well, um, I had ulterior motives. Uh, uh, (gasps) I I look. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Yeah, it it started when uh, we were at one of the conventions and he was saying, oh, there's Rebecca McKendry. I'm thinking like. You know, running through this list of all these people I had Are heard of. Are you going to sell me out and... right now? No, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I realized, you know, after you took a minute to explain, I said, oh, shit, yeah, I know of her. And so I went over and, and talked to her. And, and, you know, just from talking to her about one of the books I, I had written at the time, you know, we we all all three of us had a conversation about what horror films are, what they mean. And that kind of launched this idea that 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 James and I had started participating in uh, that following year by having discussions about horror films, because it's it's more than just what gets discussed in, in, in the first Scream movie where one of the characters is talking about, hey, these are the rules in horror movies. And, you know, don't do drugs. If you do drugs, you're going to get killed. If you have se- premarital sex, you're going to die. Uh, you know, if you're dishonest, the, the killer is going to come looking for you. 
And there was a lot more depth to, to horror movies because you had the freedom in, in those horror movies themselves, horror, thrillers, slashers, to actually talk about society. You know, what exactly we get out of the films themselves. Because, you know, with that argument that if you can't write anything, you can write horror, I think that's complete bullshit because if you can't write, you know what you do? You fucking sit at home and do nothing. The easy stuff is is like all those love stories because I would look at the stuff that was written. I'm like, it's the same fucking plot every time. Every goddamn time. It's the same thing. But with horror films, it's different. You kind of have some of the same narratives that that carry over or the or or, or some of the, the 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 similarities between the films. But the films themselves often talk about either through the subtext or through metaphors or or through all these other English terms that I try to remember what they actually mean. Uh, they they talk about these these aspects of society that we don't typically think about. You know, if you watch a film like Candyman and you look at it just for the entertainment value, it's, it's, it's great. But then you also dig into understanding, you know, the housing crisis or how public housing and, uh, and and redlining and things like that help to segregate societies and create and the creation of government housing and how it gets used to to argue that people aren't worthy because for some reason their poverty or or addictions or anything like that means that they they mean less to society or things like, like other movies we talked about like the purge and this idea of the haves and the have nots and how we kind of live vicariously through other people, or we like to look at the violence that's taking place in another community and, and think about how, well, shit, that's not happening here. We wanted to make this show to build off of the panels that we were doing at the conventions because we got a lot of good questions about films. And not only that, there's only so much that you can cover in a 50 minute or even a, you know an, an hour long panel where you're talking about these films. And we can talk about any of these films as you all have noticed. We can go on for an hour, hour and a half talking about one film because you have this link to whatever social issue or political issue is that going on and how that feeds into, you know, social anxieties or or other films for that matter. But social anxieties and, and uh, political and social strife. We've covered some films that literally, especially uh, like when when S.A. Bradley came on uh, before the show, you know, we're all on Skype talking and Scott and myself and maybe you, I'm not positive. We were kind of like, what are we going to talk about? Like, I don't feel like this film really like struck it out with me with this, this major theme, you know? And as soon as like one person said something, we were all like, oh yeah. And then there's this and this. And I think that it's amazing that horror works that way. I'm using that one as an example, but every horror movie does this on some level to me where it implants a little seed. And even if I don't see it instantly, that seed sticks in my brain and it starts growing in different directions. And like, it puts these different thoughts in my head and like slice in particular, like I watched it and I think it's because I watched so much stuff that week that I was just kind of like, I, I don't know, especially like as you guys were talking, it was just hitting me so hard. And I think that that's what horror does that other genres don't do. Other genres work. Horror kind of uses metaphors and stuff like you were talking about to show us that we can work on our fears in life without directly looking at them and how right. they tie into different things. Like, I mean, this has been going on since the dawn of horror, you know, like the Frankenstein was about bringing things back to life. And like trying to have power over God or whatever else you want to believe in, you know, like fucking Dracula was this story about this guy coming into England and xenophobia because he's going to make others like him instead of how our society is. But um, we don't look at those stories that way for the most part. I mean, we do as we get older, but when we're young reading these stories, they're just awesome fucking stories. I think that it's interesting that it sticks with you like that. And so what I'm trying to say in a very long winded diatribe here is I just think that horror is absolutely fantastic for making you think because it does use things that you're not used to and you don't see in your daily life for the most part. So it's not as easy to just write it off. 
uh, you might think you're writing it off going horror sucks, horror stupid, but it's sticking with you. And I think that that's what horror does. That's so great. And that's, that's what I wanted to bring to this show. You know, what I really wanted to do with this episode was just thank everybody. And I want to go back to what you were saying about Rebecca McKendry, because I, I know that Rebecca doesn't know this, but I was such a huge fan and, and I still am. But like, I was so scared to go talk to her. And when I said, oh, no, are you going to sell me out? Yeah, I'm going to sell myself out right now. So we were walking through Con Hall and I was like, oh, my God, there's Rebecca McKendry. You know, everybody else is like freaking out over like, I don't know, the, the Chris Evans of the world and people like that. And Rebecca had such a huge influence in my life, whether it was Fangoria for years or different things at Blumhouse. I was terrified to go talk to her. And you were like, let's just go talk to her. And I don't get scared talking to celebrities at all. You know, like I, I worked with celebrities for years. So Rebecca McHenry is the person that got to me, everyone. And we go over and we talk to her. And like you said, it was such a fantastic conversation. And then the following year, I just tweeted her and I was like, we'd love to have you on our panel. And she said, yes, that is so symbolic of what I was saying earlier about this horror community. Like, you know, she didn't have to do this. She didn't need to do it. But she was like, hey, that's cool. I want to be a part of that. And that's what I love about us in the horror community is we all want to help each other and we all want horror to thrive. And so whether it's people listening or people who have come on the show or people who have influenced me through their writing or whatever else, thank all of you. Thank you so much. And Rebecca in particular, thank you for taking a chance on us. I greatly appreciate everything that it's brought forth. Yeah. And thank you to anybody who's been recommending us for, for their conventions or conventions near them, uh, uh, sharing the, the, the links, uh, whether that's through Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, whatever means that you've been, you know, recommending the show. Uh, I want to say merci beaucoup to our, all of our friends in, in France. Um, uh, I, I don't know how to say it in Russian because I see that there's some people in <laughs> Russia. Uh, for those of you who are in China, Sheshe, uh, in Japan, Domo uh, um, especially if you're in the Spanish speaking world, muchas gracias. Uh, and and it, it's, it's, it's one of those things. Honestly, we, we thank you. We would not be here right now. Um, if it weren't for all of you listening, because honestly, if we did this and we saw there were zero downloads, uh, I would honestly tell James, one, get off the ledge. Uh, and then two, <laughs> I would probably say, fuck it. I'm just going to do something else, man. We got, I got like 10 books I'm supposed to be writing. Uh, so I want to thank all of you for, for listening. For those of you giving feedback, have left reviews, uh, again, recommended it to people. Um, those of you who, who, who've stu stood with us and, and stuck with us for all this time. Um, but you know, I got my passport, so, uh, I don't, I can't speak for James, but I got my passport. So if there's a show in Europe that you, that you <laughs> want us to come to, uh, and, and do a live show, if there's a, if there's a show in the, in the Caribbean or central South America or Asia that, that you want us to come to, uh, and meet us, uh, it's great. And especially if you're domestic, as far as in the United States, you, you want us to come to, to one of the shows and, and speak, uh, or, or even do a live show. We're up yeah. for that. Um, I, I work pretty cheaply. I mean, I, I really just work for food. Um, and I know there's a, there's a con in Kansas city and I've heard all these great things about Kansas city barbecue, but I've never had it in person. What? So, uh, Who talks about Kansas city barbecue nonstop? That's me. I mean, so if any I, of you have a hookup, hook me up now. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but anyway. but, uh, I, I want to send an extra thank you to, I don't want to say it was weird. Well, it was weird to me, but the situation wasn't weird. It was just my response because I'm not good at compliments anyway. We were in Salt Lake City and it was like three weeks or four weeks after we launched this podcast. And this like 17 year old kid came up to me and he just starts quoting the podcast to me. And I was like sitting there going, holy shit, somebody listens to it. <laughs> and like, I, I love that kid and I would love to buy you a drink in four years when you're old enough. I appreciate that everyone listens and that you guys push it. I'm fascinated by the places that we've reached. Like our second biggest listening 
community is in France. And that blows my mind because that has to be word of mouth. So that's you guys pushing it to your friends. And Germany's up there. Same thing. Oh, like, Danke. Danke, Germany. Like, I, I'm clearly not in Germany pushing this podcast. So that's you guys. So thank you. I don't know. It's just been really fascinating to me to watch it grow. Every month we have way more hits than the month before. And I know some of that's me pushing it on social media, but a lot of it is like Don was saying, you guys sharing it and you guys telling your friends about it and you guys hacking into your girlfriend's phone and subscribing to our podcast. And, you know, I boyfriend's just, phone. Oh yeah, that too. You know, whoever. And, and I just, I appreciate that so much. I'm just, I'm so amazed at how, how it grows and being able to literally see that worldwide people are interested in this topic. And I'll be honest, even going into the first panel when we did it, I was like, is anybody else going to like this? Nothing makes me happier than you guys at conventions asking us questions or pointing out something I've never thought about in a movie or things like that. But man, hit up our social media, do it there, email me, whatever. Like, let's have a conversation. Like, Twitter and Facebook are kind of just a place to go yell things and, and it just dies. Like, conversations are everything. So make sure you're hitting us back so that we can hear directly from you. And honestly, we'd, we'd probably take some suggestions on what films you want to hear about, too, so that you don't have to be like, wow, they have shitty taste in films. They never cover anything I like, but I'm going to keep listening because they're awesome. So to wrap this up, because, you know, we're not really talking about anything and we're just basically groveling at your feet, telling you how much we love you. And plus, I, it's, it's, it's Festivus Eve, so. It is. But I would just, again, wish everybody a happy holiday as far as uh, whatever whatever you may be celebrating, whether it's Festivus, Christmas, Hanukkah, Saturnalia, Kwanzaa, you know, any, any uh, Krampus not. Or if you happen to be uh, celebrating, you know, or, or observing for Belchnickel to, to come visit you and tell you whether or not you've been impish or admiral. James won't get that reference because he doesn't watch certain shows. But no, I just want to wish everybody a a, a very happy holiday and a, and a new year. And we will, of course, talk to all of you guys soon. So uh, coming up, we are going to have, in no particular order, because I'm still working on scheduling, we're going to talk about Gremlins in the next few weeks with sci-fi author Edward Savio. Uh, we're going to talk The Thing with author Alan Baxter. And we're going to look at Jacob's Ladder and Ooh. Parasite. Ooh. So I'm excited about those. But like I said, if you guys have other suggestions, throw them our way. We're always willing to, especially if I haven't heard of it. Like if I haven't seen something or haven't heard of it, it might like skyrocket up my list so that I can go watch it right now, you know? So we'll see you guys next week when we come back with a full episode. And it'll be our last episode of 2019, obviously. I don't know if we thanked you guys, so thank you for tuning in. And uh, that's about it. I am James Sabata. And I am Don Guillory. We'll see you guys next week on the Necronama.com.